In this problem, we're dealing with an infinite potential well problem with a wave function that is equal to a from 0 to a over 2, and then 0 from a over 2 to a. So it's going to look something like this, essentially a square that takes up half of the infinite potential well. Well, linearly at least, not all the way up to infinity. And our goal is to find the probability of measuring the first energy state, e sub 1. So in order to do that, we need to figure out what the probability of it being in state 1 is. And then in order to do that, we have to find the coefficient of the state 1. And finally, before we do any of that, we got to figure out what a is, what this uh, constant right here is. So, of course, one way to do that, one way to find the normalization constant is, of course, normalize the wave function by setting the probability of finding the particle anywhere inside the potential well equal to 1. We've got to, it's got to exist somewhere from uh, a over 2. Well, in reality, it's uh, 0 to a, but we know that it only exists in this half of the wave of the infinite potential well, so a over 2. And then the wave function, you just do, just do x dx, right? And so luckily we were given a pretty easy wave function. That wave function is just constant throughout this side of the potential well. So it's just a. That's a fairly easy integral to solve for. We get a squared is equal to x from a over 2 to 0. And whenever we evaluate that, that's just a squared times a over 2. All right, so far so good. Now we solve for a. So a is equal to 2 over a. All right, so we got this first step. We found the normalization constant, so we have an actual wave function uh, to deal with. It's just a constant, square root of 2 over a right here. And now uh, we got to solve for the coefficient of the first state. So just a little background. Remember, the this wave function is actually a superposition of a bunch of different wave functions. Right, and just a bunch of different sine and cosine functions until it ends up equaling a perfectly square pater, square wave function right here. So the first coefficient uh, that exists right for the first state is equal to, this is done using Fourier's trick from zero to a over two. Then we do the sine of n pi x over a and then that is times our wave function frozen at zero. And again, we just found out what that wave function is. That wave function is just equal to a, and we saw, found that to be square root of a over two, right? And then this n is just one because it's the first, uh, we're trying to find in the first energy state here. So go ahead and plug in the math. Since this is square root of two uh, over a, and then multiply this, by square root of 2 over a, we're just going to get, of course, 2 over a. Then this integral, is, we're just left with a sine integral at this point. So cosine of n, which is just 1, uh, x over a times x over pi right here. And all of that is evaluated from a over 2 to 0. And then whenever we perform this, that negative sign will go ahead and come out front. We'll get 2 over a a over pi, we'll go ahead and cancel those two a's out for the bookkeeping process. Cosine of pi over two minus cosine of zero, which is just zero, or that's just one. This is actually zero. So this whole thing will end up being a negative positive two over pi, right? So we're able to find out now that coefficient. So this is the home stretch right here. So the probability of one is actually just the modulus squared of that coefficient. And so whenever we just do the modulus square of that, we get four over pi squared, which is equal to about, not equal to, but more approximately 0.41. So that's our answer. We get about a 41% chance of measuring the first energy state whenever we do a measurement on this wave function here.